technology has been on an ever-expanding quest since the beginning of time to either fix or enhance um, those things, those, the, the input, the processing, and the output. And to just give you three simple examples, to enhance the input, well, we invented glasses. How do I enhance processing? Like if I want to remember something, I repeat it over and over again, right? That's a way of enhancing my processing and storage of that, um, of that thing that I want to remember. And then how do I, how do I enhance output? Well, um, for example, I might uh, wear shoes so that I can run faster. Let's now contrast the idea of virtual reality versus the idea of cyber being. And um, really the biggest difference I can see after looking at this in quite a lot of detail is that when we talk about something as being a virtual reality system, we're usually talking about it enhancing or augmenting or fixing you from outside. It's something that you add to your, you add to your um, input and output system. Whereas in cyber being, it actually augments your input, output, or processing from inside you. So if I'm a cyborg, that means all of, my, all of my augmentation is happening inside my shell. But if I'm living in a virtual reality, that means I still have my shell, I still have my body, but I'm inside this virtual reality. The more immersed you are, the more you feel like the virtual or cyber experience is a real experience. So that's the idea of immersion. If you're totally or fully immersed, then you can't tell the difference between reality and your augmentation of reality, either your cyber augmentation or your virtual augmentation of reality. Those two things merge together. Input fidelity. Fidelity means the trueness or the accuracy or the precision with which the experience is rendered. So how close to your natural senses is the sight that you're having? How close to your natural senses is the hearing that you're having? How close to your natural senses is the um, touch that you're experiencing or the, or the body sense or whatever it is? Similarly, we can have output fidelity. How close to natural behavior is this system allowing you to be? Output fidelity, how close is it to your natural behavior to output effectiveness? Does it do something like, for example, to, um, to move my character in World of Warcraft, I use the keypad, right? That, that's not anything like what I do to move my person in real life, right? I'm using a very artificial behavior in order to move my character in World of Warcraft. It's got low fidelity. But it has lots of effectiveness, right? I move that character really well, and I can, if I fingers just the right way, that character's jumping and dancing and doing all sorts of things that I want him to do. Okay, so we have input fidelity. How close is the, is the artificial um, sensation to real sensation? We have output fidelity. How close is the artificial behavior to real uh, be behavior? And output effectiveness, which says, how effective is this particular kind of behavior in the virtual or the cyber reality? Okay, and again, we'll see examples of these in, um, in, in, in throughout the rest of this lecture. Okay, now then there's a, a really big one actually, which is your desire to believe. How much do you want to believe that this experience is real versus not wanting to believe that it's real? So that's kind of a wild card, and we'll see that wild card come up right away as we get into the different systems.